and welcome to section 7 this section is on sourcing options and related considerations the syllabus for this is like this understand and the use and value of the following across the service value system build versus buy considerations meaning why to build or why to buy from outside sourcing options the various sourcing options possible and thirdly what is the meaning of service integration and management okay with that let's move on <clears throat> sourcing has been in place since several years um, in my experience uh, it's been more into because I am from IT so um, there has been a lot of sourcing uh, which began in IT outsourcing particularly since maybe late 80s or so and more and more even critical services got outsourced but eventually service consumers realize that not everything can be outsourced so let's look into the various elements of sourcing most of the time sourcing is commercial so therefore we look at commercial and sourcing considerations it's increasingly rare for organizations to create products and services using their own resources they usually go for um, other third-party suppliers and that's why they have a sourcing strategy meaning there are various reasons uh, based on which they opt for going to a third party they look at um, not only the current needs as well as the future also so the current needs may be to develop a product in the coming year but they may al also think about uh, what kind of suppliers they need uh, for the next 10 years they may do a business assessment market assessment and decide all that uh, generally a sourcing strategy and decision making is based on cost how much does it cost to procure something versus how much does it cost to make something in-house it can also be generally due to resource challenges uh, in case competitive resources are not available within the organization they may want to outsource it or if they do have competitive resources but not in sufficient quantity and it takes time to to onboard more such a stuff then they may outsource it again competition industry uh, and uh, customer consumer demands also alter those decisions sometimes uh, some customers do uh, expect that um, certain uh, providers source some of their services through well-known uh, suppliers rather than that provider delivering those services like just as example as uh, some of the countries uh, where um, targeted for uh, certain software services or certain hardware services and so on and there was a preference towards those countries that uh, if the work is given to those countries then it may bring in some economy of cost uh, for uh, almost the same quality and maybe some other side benefits and there are some barriers sometimes there may be some regulations um, which may prevent um, new suppliers from coming up there may be a saturation of suppliers or maybe there are some regulations uh, which may prevent the suppliers from um, experimenting and eventually establishing themselves in the market and however there are costs and risks from sourcing yeah? whenever there are even one supplier or sometimes uh, too many suppliers there are risks to be considered costs to be considered so a lot of um, factors exist in uh, strategizing for sourcing for suppliers some of the factors are related to selection of suppliers some of the factors are related to the make or buy decision itself and uh, the strategies also are about uh, what type of contract should be in place maybe even things like should they go for a time and material contract as is common in uh, special engagements you know high highly uh, technical kind of engagements or should they go for a cost uh, expense reimbursement kind of contracts so all those also come into matter then again there are um, um, different types of uh, uh, projects like turnkey projects where um, if i am the supplier i build something and give it to you and then you operate it afterwards or do i maintain after building it so all these considerations need to be thought about 
So it's a large uh, uh, or a wide topic. There are uh, specializations available in uh, supply chain management and procurement and purchasing, if you are interested. Generally, um, before I move on to this build versus buy decision, uh, under sourcing strategy, normally companies use uh, some kind of a gap analysis. They look at, um, for example, a company has been developing a certain product and that succeeded in the last, let's say, 15 years. And they may look at the market landscape and decide what new to develop. And at that time, they may decide to whether to source something or not. And that's why generally um, those techniques like investment appraisal or gap analysis techniques will be used. Generally in marketing, et cetera, they use uh, techniques like uh, McKinsey 7S framework, uh, for example. Uh, though for the exam, we don't have to know those kind of uh, frameworks. Therefore, let's move on to this build versus buy decision making. When to do build in-house versus when to buy from outside. Yeah. And uh, much of which is uh, maybe logical to conclude. If uh, the service or a component uh, requires knowledge on the organization's practices and its own business methods, then it may be better to do it in-house because uh, we don't have to educate a third party about the organization's culture and uh, practices and uh, needs. So some very specific services may have to be kept in-house. You know? For example, maybe financial systems, which are kind of confidential nature. And there are very specific ways of dealing with uh, the, the organization's financial procedures. Then it could be kept in-house. And uh, this is interesting. When the demand from the customer for personalized products is high, the customer has a very specific need which can be fulfilled only by the organization. It cannot be given out to a supplier because the supplier has only a very um, specific product which cannot be customized yeah, or personalized. Then it may be better to keep it in-house. Right? Um, unless there are suppliers who have also customized offerings. Also, when the environment or ecosystem is subject to rapid changes, imagine giving out to a supplier and there's a rapid change in the environment, maybe political, economical, etc. Then we don't know whether that supplier might go bankrupt or maybe they can deal with the new regulation. Therefore, better to keep it in-house and make those decisions. And if there is no mass market adoption, then certain products are not used by too many people, but only some niche customers, then uh, better to keep it in-house. Because if it is mass production, then usually there are several suppliers in the market who are well-versed with the technology, well-versed with the related practices and so on. And particularly, this is um, well-known. When compliance is a key aspect, then better to keep it in-house. Because the moment it is outsourced, there is a risk of uh, non-compliance. I've been in situations wherein uh, work was outsourced and then we found out that the supplier is not compliant and then we have to pull it back. On the other hand, sometimes I've done work given to be um, my organization by a customer and they have pulled it back. So it could happen any any direction. Going to the right side, when it is good for buying, when in-house skills and resources are not available or they are assigned to other activities, or uh, the skills are so specialized that it may take a lot of time to get our own in-house people uh, aware of those skills and uh, experience them. It takes time to build those skills. Or if the, the processes, we may have the people, but the processes to build those kind of products are right now immature. Rather, we can outsource it to organizations who are already matured. And there's a lot of commoditization of those uh, services or products. They are available in the market as just something like an off-the-shelf product. You know, when you go to a supermarket and buy something off the shelf, shelf, then why do you want to make it yourself? So the same concept here, commodification. The demand for service components is low or subject to significant fluctuation. It's about the components, not the service itself. The service itself um, has demand but the, the component demand can fluctuate. For example, a certain technology which is used to develop an application, uh, it may suddenly become a mobile app, or suddenly it may become some other kind of app which is uh, having IoT interface to other devices. So there's a lot of fluctuation in the way 
the components are used in a service because when this happens it may be uh, better to um, buy it because the organization may not be able to cope up with um, a fluctuation in the demand of the components which means they have to be abreast of technology abreast of changing uh, individual component aspects component is not core to the strategy brand or uh, competitive differentiation yes yeah, sometimes when something is not core this can be easily outsourced this is not our core product or core component and when uh, the work is repetitive then it can be given to outsourcing generally that's what is done so that the in-house resources may be used for better decision making and more uh, um, meaningful work let's say and uh, environment is stable yeah on the left side what you have to know here is on the left side the environment is volatile then go for in-house but when the environment is stable then outsource it the second thing is personalized than in-house whereas um, demand for the components is low or sub the demand for the components fluctuates like technology fluctuates and then um, go for buying <clears throat>